All right. <laughs> this is going to be the third time I've attempted to uh, to record myself here um, for all of you because I keep getting tongue twisted and ah, I don't know. So let's see if we can make it through this one. Shalom. Shalom, everyone. Um, I hope that you had a wonderful Shabbat. I hope it was very restful and delightful. Mine was was good. Um, I I shared a, I I read from the Torah scroll, um, and I also shared my testimony, um, which was kind of special for today, the service. Um, but I'm not gonna share my testimony with you right now. I had posted a video of my testimony once before, and I took it down. I believe it was because there was some important things that I had left out. There's always things I know when we forget, remember later. Um, so eventually, I will hopefully post my testimony again. Um, but what I actually, what I want to focus on for this uh, video to share is questions that were asked um, by Julian. I'm really sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, it's just kind of how I read it, but um, again, you know, if I said that wrong, sorry. Um, yeah, so I want to respond to your questions because you got some good ones, and I believe others may have asked me similar questions before. Um, so yeah, let's let's get to that. I'm gonna minimize this and open this. Okay, so the first he sent me two messages here. The first one, shalom, 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 shalom. Uh, I heard something very interesting recently. Someone mentioned certain teachings within Shaul's writings are actually from the Talmud, such as women being silent in the congregation. What are your thoughts on that? Shalom and Mashiach Shem, Messiah's name. Um, yeah, okay. So, first, but look, this is going to have to be taken in parts because you've got more than one thing here going on. The first your first thing you're sharing here is about someone who mentioned this uh, with the teachings within Shul's writings from the Talmud. I really cannot, I can't deny that, but I cannot confirm it either. I, it's, you've given me something to study um, because I don't know, um, but I do know that from, if I remember correctly, from Rabbi Shapira's book, uh, Return of the Kosher Pig, Great book, yes, provocative name, but I highly recommend the book. It's a good book. Um, he talks about, refers to things that Yeshua referenced of from the Talmud. So, like quotes, quoting from that. Um, so that's that was pretty cool, but I mean pretty interesting. But um, in regards to Rav Shaul's, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'd like to I'd like to study that. Actually, that'd be really interesting. Um, but then you said specifically, such as women being silent in the congregation. I really don't know what, if the Talmud says something about that. I do know that that scripture, I mean, that that is actually taken out of context so much. I mean, even there's doctrines made about that to the extent that there's this belief system that women can't say anything in congregations. I know in some places around the world, and, and that's not that's not what... Is, that was not what was being said, and that has to be understood, um, first of all. Uh, I mean, you, it has to be understood that in a traditional synagogue, you have women and men separated from each other. Um, they're not sitting, you know, spouses are not sitting with each other. It's very different than um, a lot of congregations that people are familiar with. Um, and uh, I, I've had the blessing of getting to be in the, I mean, um, where I'm at now, we have, you know, we don't have separation like that, but I have been to, uh, I have been to synagogues where the men and women are separated, and it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a thing of inferiority or anything like that, it's more of a, really kind of a blessing of, you know, just that separation, I don't know, it's hard to explain unless you experience it, I think, um, but what has to be, what has to be understood about this is that, Okay, so women and men separated. There's you have a question about something. You're gonna, you know, wife has something she wants to say to her husband. <sighs> Since there's that distance factor, she's gonna. It's gonna be very distracting if she tries to ask a question to her spouse. 
um, across the way, you know, across the sanctuary, and vice versa, really. Um, but I think that's, you know, it's kind of interesting because there are definitely guys who like to talk as well. There's nothing wrong with that. So it's just it's interesting women specifically, but um, but yeah. So yeah, it has to be understood that that is that's what, that's the context of here. You can't um, be asking, talking across the sanctuary. I mean, that's disrupt. It's disrupting in any service, any kind of noise, any kind of um, un unnecessary uh, distraction. Um, it's disturbing to the in the. It's a disturbance in the service. So that is not good, um, and it could be distraction in more than one way. Um, all right, so moving on though, we could keep talking about that, right? Uh, your next one. Okay, so I was, Julian says, so I was just curious to know what your thoughts are on certain presumably rabbinical laws regarding Shabbat. For example, turning lights on and off. I know according to the Torah, we are not permitted to kindle a fire during Shabbat. I understand part of this to be tied to the preparation and cooking of food. However, I'm sure it's not just limited to just that. Kindling a fire also brings forth light, which is why I suspect there are certain rabbinic laws which also pro prohibit lights from being turned on during Shabbat. This reasoning is just my own speculation. I'm not sure what the official reasons are given by the rabbis who have issued such restrictions. What are your thoughts on the matter? Peace and blessings to you in Yeshua's name. Shalom. Shalom. Okay, so there's a lot there, but yet it's on the same topic. Uh, well, um, the turning lights and off, that is a, a rabbinic thing. You know, it doesn't say specifically in the Bible, you can't turn lights on and off. I mean, obviously we didn't have, uh, we didn't have things like we have today. You can turn my, my lamp on or off in, in ancient times. Um, but I know that comes from, that idea comes from where, you know, not to kindle a fire on Shabbat. Um, so I, I turn lights on off if I have to on Shabbat. I, I did today. I mean, um, I, I, for me personally, that's, but I know that, uh, even in Messianic Jewish circles, that's something that some people, they, you know, they stick to that. And, and I'm, you know, if you want to do that, you know, that's okay. I, I'm not against it. I know just for me personally, it's not a work. It's not a job for me to turn the lights on and off, but I know, you know, the understanding goes back to the fire. For Shabbat, um, but then the context of that has to be understood. Uh, what what did that mean to be kindling the fire during Shabbat? Why was that not permitted? Um, there was a uh, work involved, right? I mean, it's, uh, when you think when I think of a fire, I do think of work involved. At least a real fire, you gotta get the tree, cut the tree, and um, get the branches, and it's just a lot. It's a lot involved. Um, so, yeah, but, and I know that's, that's like I was saying that the turning lights on and off kind of for that spark, um, goes back to this understanding. Um, but, uh, you know, just for me personally, it's, it's not a work. It's not, uh, for that. Um, and then you did say you understood to be tied to preparation, cooking of food. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess, yeah, it just kind of goes with what I was saying, um, at least my thoughts on it. It's kind of wrapped up in that, um, that, you know, yeah, it comes, it comes from, comes from that. I mean, let me read this one more time, okay. Yeah, yeah, because you said kindling a fire also brings forth light, which is why I suspect there are certain rabbinic laws which prohibit lights from being turned on during Shabbat. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I mean, that's where that comes from, and, um, and I'm not sure if you're wanting, you just want to know my thoughts, I guess, those were my thoughts, but, um, if you also want to know my opinion or how I see it, I, I, you know, I don't see it wrong if somebody wants to not turn lights on enough, um, I also don't see it wrong if one does turn the lights on enough, because, you know, it takes, you know, there's two sides of it, right, you know, um, 
very much so. And it's interesting because there are wait there are things that I do, um, living a Jewish life that perhaps you know be considered be considered rabbinic, but um, things like there's also things that I don't uh, participate in, and that would be one of them. I'm not a, I'm not uh, ashamed to turn lights on and off on Shabbat, um, but neither is there shame in deciding not to turn lights on. Off. All right, so I hope that answered your questions, and um, hopefully there wasn't too much rambling in there. I, I had I have to like really process, even though I had read this already earlier. I had to when I'm reading it again, I have to process things. Um, <laughs> the mind of a harpist, as I've said before, going in different directions, okay? <laughs> it's like my mind works the way my fingers do, just going up and down the harp. I gotta put it pieces together. Um, yeah, that was cool though. I'm glad that you asked that. And, and definitely, if anybody else has more to share or more you want to say about that, as long as it's civil and it's in regards to this, uh, feel free uh, to share. Um, it would be interesting to hear other people's thoughts and perspectives and um, what, what's out there. I'd be really interested to hear it. Um, and if it takes a while for your comment to be allowed, you know, I apologize for that. Sometimes it happens. Um, sometimes I, you know, I make these videos and then I am doing stuff and I don't get back to allow comments. And the reasons why I, the reason why I have that allowed comments um, is because in the past uh, I've had some uh, I've had some death threats and it's been a long time since I've had that but I have so that's why I have that up there and so I do apologize if it takes me a while to allow your comments um, and some comments I don't allow not not necessarily because I don't um, not like I don't like the comments but some some cases uh, comments are made that are not um, in reference to the video and that's okay I mean if it's an encouraging message but um, it's like sometimes like a different topic um, and in that case if you have something you want to share like that please feel free to send it maybe in a message kind of like uh, what Julian did here that was pretty cool um, if you can find the message on my channel feel free to send um, send messages like that and then even if it's a different um, topic yeah feel free to do that okay Shalom, shalom, shavua tov. I love you all, and thanks again, Julian, um, for asking these questions. May you be blessed, and uh, yeah, take care. Take care, everyone. Shavu, shavu, I almost said shavua shalom. Shavua tov. <laughs>